ransom of salvation in your name, Jesus Christ. My healing, my healing. Oh. Lift up your hand one more time. Sing it softly now. Say. I see chains broken. I see chains broken. I see chains broken. I see chains broken. I don't know what you came here with. But there's salvation in the name of Jesus. There's a salvation. My living oh. One more time. Let's take it softly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I see the sweet presence of the Lord all over us here. Yeah. something needs to break but I want your hope to fix on him if there's an habit that has been terrorizing you for years there's an anointing in the house don't always wait for something to come before it happens just trust the Lord and you will see it happen to you thank you Jesus my hope is built on nothing less yes, than Jesus' blood in righteousness. Yes, I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only lean on Jesus' name. My hope is built for nothing less than Jesus' Lord and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest rain. Yes. 
stand on you. On this matter, I look unto you. On this matter, I look unto you. On this matter, I look unto you. On this issue, I look unto you. All other ground are sinking, sir. All of the ground are sinking, sir. Church, we look unto him. He said they look unto him and their faces were lighted. And they were not ashamed. Lord, we look unto you. We look unto you, Jesus. All of the ground, all of the ground are sinking, sir. All of the ground are sinking, sir. Lord, all the ground are sinking, sir. All of the ground are sinking, sir. All of the ground are sinking, sir. Christ, the focus Jesus, come on. Oh. Tell somebody all on the ground that's sick in sand. You can be seated. Hallelujah. All of the ground are sick in sand. Actually, your neighbor has the rain today. It's been a raining week all week. But tell the person, thank you for making church today. Tell the person, I know you're on a journey. Tell the person, you look desperate. You look desperate. You look, you look hungry. You look hungry and angry. <laughs> I'm hungry and I'm angry myself. Reduce the volume a bit. I'm hungry and I'm angry myself. Because you need to get to a point in your life where you need to know the intention of God that guarantees your exploits in life. One of the major challenges we all have is to understand what God is doing. I keep asking myself in this journey, there are too many kinds of experiences some of us are having. I've had my down moments. I've had my rough moments. I've had my ups and downs in life. But for every time I have experiences, I always have the assurances of God. There's always just that thing that he does that proves that he's around me. Even when I'm going through hell and high water, valley of shadow of death, he always just leaves his presence to let me know that I'm not forgotten and I'm not forsaken. 
Church, there is nothing that you are going through that people have not gone through. You are not the first. Certainly, you will not what? You will not be the last. He said, there is no temptation that is coming upon you that has not happened to anybody under the earth. He said, but God will create a way of escape. So, we need to keep reminding ourselves in the journey of life that we keep fighting until the rapture comes. And if some of you are caught up in the rapture, fantastic. But we need to keep fighting. We need to be in the place and the position of victory. Making sure we're retaining our position at the place of the gate and not losing our call as gatekeepers. We must always remember that there is no vacation in the spirit. No matter how tired you are, make sure you don't vacate your position. There is no vacation in the spirit. You must always have that understanding. No matter how tired you are, make sure you don't vacate your position. Because if you vacate your position, somebody else will take over. There is no vacuum in the spirit. Somebody is always trying to take over. It's a warfare. Somebody is always trying to take over. So you must never vacate your position. Even if you are tired, make sure in your being tired, you're praying. If you don't know what to pray, make sure you edify yourself in the spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost. Because you don't know what to pray. Because the Bible says when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you do what? You edify. So one area of edification is praying in the spirit. So as we kick off on this journey of dominion, you know my style and my principle is that you must write something down. So you must have a note. If you don't have a note, physical note, you must have a note in your phone, but you must write something down. If you don't write anything down or you don't have a note, ask so that they can get you a note and a pen. It's a teaching meeting and in a teaching meeting, you write, sir. So if there's nobody writing beside you, please help the person and say, you need to get a note. Ushers, please get sample notes that we can give people and get a pen. Make sure they return our pen. And when they are coming next to it, make sure they get their own note. So that we'll not be giving you a note every Wednesday. Do you understand that? So look at your neighbor by your side and say, do you have your note? Tell the person, show me your note. That the best pastor is talking to you. He's talking to you. Now, normally, if you have a note, you must be able to write what pastor says and what God is saying out of what pastor says. You see, anytime you hear the word, always hear his word in the word. Because there's something called the... I always try to make people understand it. It's called the proceeding word. It means in every word, you must be able to find the one proceeding, the one coming at you, the one saying this is for you, the one that has your name on it. Some of you would have heard before, he said, hey, this word has my name on it. It's not every promise that has your name on it. So you must be able to identify if this one has my name on it. So in every message, every message is not your message. Did you hear what I said? May I repeat it again? Every message is not what? Your message. It's not every message you dive into. That's why I don't pick every message. There are messages for seasons. There are messages you search for for seasons. There are messages you pack to go and fight. There are messages for solution. There are messages. I remember the testimony about someone that had an HIV. And when the person discovered that she had an HIV, what she did was this. She packed certain messages and pick the Bible, and pick certain books, and went to lock as himself, I think it was he, and went to lock himself in, a, in an hotel, and said, I will not come out of here until I find light onto my body. She, he started reading for three days or something like that. Prayed, picked up, organized himself, prepared the prayer. Because you see, some of us, we enter the word in the place of prayer. We don't prepare prayer. You see, in prayer, you prepare. You know, like you want to cook, yeah? Let's say you want to cook a goosey soup. 
For some of you that love egusi soup, are you getting me? I used to like egusi soup, but I've stopped now. So for some of you that love egusi soup, you know the mixture of egusi soup. What, what are the mixture? Egusi, right? What again? Oil, right? What again? Pepper, right? What again? Vegetable, what again? Stuffed fish for people that like uh, goat meat and uh, orishirishi and all that. You, you pick all of that. What again? What again do you... Eh? Crayfish. What again? Eh? I've called Pomo. Pomo, okay. Are people still eating Pomo? Okay, fine. Then Pomo. Then, then what again? What are people doing? Now, you pick all those things, then you arrange them. You don't, you don't, you don't pick them and start eating them. You arrange them. What that means is this. If you want to go for prayer, you prepare the pomo of the prayer. You prepare the shaki of the prayer. You prepare the tomato of the prayer. You prepare the vegetable. So you prepare. In preparation, listen, you are going for war. Detail your prayers. Detail the ingredients. You don't come into prayer and in the place of war, you are looking for where is the sword. No, 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 no. You are looking for where is the shield. No, 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 no. You are looking for where is the helmet. No, 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 no. You are prepared. So as you are praying, you are pulling the ingredients. You know you are preparing you are pulling the ingredients. You are preparing soup. That's what the Bible said. Declare thou that that may be justified. How? You have prepared the soup. So when you bring it to the Father in the place of prayer, he goes as a sweet smelling savoir. Then you see God will, ah, who is cooking? Then God will smell. Then you come and say, who is cooking? Then you will declare, ask, then you shall receive. Seek then you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. If you don't prepare well, the door don't open. Doors open to a prepared prayer. Prepared. Pastor, why are my prayers not answered? Your prayer are zigzag. They are not prepared. You pray scattered prayers. You pray emotional prayer. Ah, ah, ah. Lord, you can see me. Ah. Many people are doing, Lord, you can see me. Many people all those tears that you come down. Lord, you can see me. I'm the only one. You are not the only one. Check India. There are many of people crying like that. Who did not hear that? He doesn't answer tears. He answers faith. I cannot tell someone doesn't answer tears. He doesn't answer tears. No, tell your neighbor. Say he doesn't answer tears. Guys, you are not ready for me today. I said, tell someone doesn't answer tears. He answers faith. Somebody will say, Pastor, Pastor, the Lord can see me. He can he, He's not seeing you. He doesn't see you. He sees faith. Jesus was talking about those people that had their friend that was lame and had all kinds of diseases and he could not walk. He was paralyzed. Bible records that they could not enter into the room that Jesus was teaching. And when they could not enter, the Bible said that they went to the roof of the house and pulled off the roof, four of them, and they let down their friend. And as they were letting down their friend, Jesus saw them. And the Bible said that Jesus saw their faith. Faith can be seen. There's an attitude you will create. Everyone will see it. And everyone will say, no, no, no. This one needs to be answered. Do you know faith can put you first in line? You didn't hear what I said. I said, do you know faith can put you first in line? Do you know the woman with the issue of blood was not in the to-do list of Jesus on that day? Do you know if you ask the PA, Peter, and James, if you ask them and say, hey, please, can you give us Jesus itinerary for the day? They will tell you, Jesus is going to this person's house. Jesus is going to that person's house. If you check, there was no woman of the issue of the blood. It's not about whether your name was there first. Your faith can bring you to first in line. Do you understand what I'm saying? But the woman said something. The woman said something. Listen, in this teaching, I'll be provoking your faith. The woman said something. The woman said, if I may, hey, 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 she made the decision before she left her house. There are some decisions some of us need to make before you start facing distractions. Make a commitment to commitment. One day I define commitment to somebody. I said, do you know commitment is when you fry um, um, chicken with oil? That's commitment. The oil is committed to the chicken. The chicken is committed to the oil. You so fry them, you can mix them. If you put the chicken, you must put the oil. Do you understand what I'm saying now? That's commitment. You know when you are frying chicken and chicken is saying yes, yes, and it's entering the oil. The oil is entering the chicken. <laughs> commitment. She made a decision. I said, if I may, he made that decision. And when she went out, no matter the insult, no matter the distraction, if I may, 
I don't care what they are saying. If I may, madam, you are smelly. If I may, madam, what, what's wrong with you? If I may, madam, blood is dropping from your body. If I may, nobody was saying anything to that woman. The woman just kept walking. Blood was dripping. She didn't care. She has used her last part. She has spent all her money. She was smelling. It wasn't perfume. He was stench. But she didn't care. She didn't look at her beauty. She kept pressing. She kept pressing. She kept pressing. All of a sudden, she thought the hem of the garment. I hope you know in her pressing, she must have been touching other hems. I hope you know everybody was wearing garments. Oh, church, you are not here. You are not here. She must have been touching other hem. Not so. No, not so. You know why? She was touching those hems. No virtue was coming out. <laughs> but when she got to the hem of Jesus, the hems of hems. Oh, I don't know where that came from. But the hem of hems. When she touched the hem of the garment of Jesus, virtue came. There was electricity. Ah, all of a sudden, the Bible said, and the blood, and the blood ceased. For virtue left Jesus Christ immediately. She was possibly not in line, but she became the first to receive the miracle on that day. May I pronounce to somebody here, who you think you are not in line? Listen, listen. I said, they think you are not in line. May your faith bring you forward. If you want to say amen, say amen. I said, may your faith bring you forward. No, I said, may your faith bring you forward. There's nothing like having the faith of God. You is not in how big or how small you are. If your faith is like a mustard seed, sir, that's what scripture said. He said, you shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and you shall not doubt in your heart. He said, what you say, you shall have. What you say, you shall have. What you say, you shall have. He said, but have a faith as a mustard seed. Pastor, I don't have faith. No, you don't need one. Have one like a seed. You don't need those big faith. No, 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 no. Have one like a seed. All the Lord needs is a seed. He said, if a tree be cut off at the scent of water, it will sprout up again. It means when you cut off a tree, if it can smell water, hope will come. Ah, Church, we're getting to a season. It's only your faith that can save you. Oh, Jesus told Peter, he said, I prayed for you. They're about to kill you. I prayed for you that your faith will not fail you. I pray in the name of Jesus for people here. I said, your faith will not fail you. You don't know where faith people have faith people before. You will be in the hospital like this. Your, your wife is in the hospital. She, she's bleeding. She's bleeding and you're confused. You don't know what to say. You don't know what to pray. You are praying all kinds of prayer. You prayed in tongue. You prayed in understanding. You've called pastor. You've called Jeho. You've called apostle. And they say she's still bleeding. She's still bleeding. You will get to a time that you will take a stand. I say, what's all this confusion? You will not take a position. What's all this confusion? Why am I doing all this calling people? I see, what, what, what's wrong with me? Then you take a position. Then the moment you take that position, hey, heaven too will take a position immediately. He said, this guy is about to get serious. Then guess what? The moment you take that position, devils will take that position too. They say, what's this guy about to do? Then you just make a pronunciation. You remind yourself of who you are first. Then you not say, hey, 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 hey. I'm not a child of a goat. I'm a child of a lion. Then you make a pronouncement in the name of Jesus. I command this block to stop. No! Not tomorrow. No! Then after you say, you say, honey, are you okay? I'm okay. We move on. Church, church, listen, listen, listen. That's because there's sometimes you will call for a friend and don't be a friend. Yeah. Yeah. And it's God setting you up. God will block all your access yeah. so that you can only have one access. Yeah. Your access will be up, not anywhere around you. If God is the one blocking you, sir, you think he's devil? No, God is one shielding. Is that enough of men? Think of me. Look up. So they looked on him and their faces was not ashamed. Their faces were enlightened. They look unto him. Their faces were enlightened. You're looking too down. Look up. We look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Are you ready for this season? Church, are you ready for this season? After this season, I promise you, you will not be walking like humans anymore. 
Ah, Pastor, what do you mean? Ah, okay, I know, 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 I know these things will confuse you. I know it will confuse you. I said, you'll not be walking like humans anymore. What that means is like this. You'll be dealing with people from heavenly perspective. You will not be dealing with people from heavenly conditions. When people speak, you will speak from heavenly perspective. When they say something, you will say... It was some, of, some people would think you are crazy. You say, my father worked here. Eat that I walk. He said, what are you saying? He said, my father has not said what you said. You, you, listen, you may not say it in that lingua, but you'll be speaking from that mentality. It's called heavenly mindset. You'll be speaking from a mindset that does not believe in limitation. I get what I'm saying now. So when somebody brings something to you, when somebody brings something to you, and he says, and the person says, can we do it? You look at it. Your first response is not, we cannot. No, 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 no. Heavenly citizens don't behave that way. No, 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 we don't behave that way. When you bring things that we can do ourselves, you say, oh, no, 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 this is simple. But when you bring things that we cannot do, we look at it and say, this is also simple. You know why? Because at that time, you shift your gaze from you to him that is able to do all things exceedingly and abundantly above what? Above what you ask or what you want? What you think. If it comes through your heart, know that he's able to do above it. If it crosses your heart, God is able to do above it. Stop getting afraid. If a picture comes into your heart that one day you will buy a plane, don't shake, don't shiver. Put your faith in God. If he has revealed it, he will do it. If he has said it, he will bring it to pass. Stop thinking who will do it. Stop thinking who will do it. That was the mistake that Mary had. Stop thinking. He said, Mary, listen. I told you you're going to have a baby. Nobody's going to sleep with you. How shall this thing be? Stop worrying yourself about how it shall be. He said, the power of the most High shall overshadow you. All you need is being the place where you can be overshadowed. Being the position, being enlightenment for shadowing. That if I overshadow you, you will birth something. You birth something. Okay, I just want to prepare you ready as we dive in. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Let's start writing now. Genesis 1 26. That's the one say, I have dominion. Oh, be doing what I do, please. I have dominion. I have dominion over sin. Oh, some of you are not saying it. I say, I have dominion over sin. I have dominion over flesh. Oh, glory to God. I have dominion over poverty. I have dominion over these world systems. I have. I have dominion over my finances. I have dominion. Oh, can you say this? I have dominion over money. Money will not rule any of you in this place again. You will not in your life ever want to do anything. You know, people say, do anything. You will not have to do anything for money. You will never get to a point where you do anything. No, it's not about anything. Because it's in doing anything that you put your hand into iniquity. You will not do anything. You will have dominion over money. You will rule, you will rule over money. You didn't hear what I said? I said you rule over money. And I'm not just talking about that legal tender. I'm not just talking about the paper. I'm talking about the spirit of it. I said you rule over the spirit of mammon. Oh, church, you are not here. I said you rule over the spirit of mammon. There will be no time that the spirit of mammon will overshadow you. Listen, spirit of mammon will not control you. Because of mammon, you will not beg. Because of mammon, you will not beg. In the name of Jesus. I said you will rule over mammon. You will rule over mammon. All these people that spirit of mammon is confusing. Any small thing you are shaking, they say you should come and pay your rent. You're, you're doubling. It's the spirit of mammon. It's the spirit of mammon. It's the spirit of mammon that's not making some people sleep in the night. It's the spirit of mammon. It's the spirit of mammon. It's the spirit of mammon that comes and tells you, listen, I'm going to disgrace you. Do you know how many times spirit of mammon talks to people? He said, I will disgrace you. Pay the school fees. Oh, you got in the admission. Pay. And spirit of mammon will wear suit and shirt. The spirit of mama will we, we wear game and come and meet you. I said, come and pay. The spirit of mama. But you must get to a point where you open your eyes to the devil. Let the devil see you eyeball to eyeball. The Bible talking to Jeremiah, I say, I'll make your face hard against their face. So you look at the you look at the enemy and say, listen, you are mammon. God is bigger than mammon. Oh, and the Bible says, who shall you choose? You can't serve two masters. He said, you can serve mammon or serve me. I serve God. And whoever, whoever you serve, you want in his authority. Now, because I serve God, I rule over mammon. 
I rule over Mammon. I rule over Mammon. I rule over the sp- oh oh. I remember the day I got victory over Mammon years ago. I got victory over Mammon. Money does not move me once. I'm being sincere with you. Money it does not move me. There was a day money was moving me, man. I will see money in my account. I'll be shaking. I will calculate everything I will buy. Ah, I'll say, thank God. Wow. We'll buy this, we'll buy this. That's how money was moving me. But God broke that bondage. You now know why money doesn't move me. If the money enters into my account, I know I'm not the one spending it. I know it's not mine. He only moves if it's yours. But when money comes in and the Lord is already whispering to you, half of it is going here. 10% is going here. 30% is going here. Will you, will you, oh, church, you are not here. Will, will you be jumping when you see, when you see six million, say, ah, oh, will you be jumping? You, you know your excitement will be, because as the money is coming in, you are also hearing a voice behind thee telling you in the way you should go so that you can walk the earning. So the voice is already saying, And I, the money has label. As the money is landing, it has a name. So as the money is coming in, you'll be here. Mm, Johnson, Johnson, Johnson. I believe there's no Johnson here today. Mm, the thing is landing. Mm, Johnson. So as the money is landing, even if you want to try to remove something, you'll be hearing Johnson, 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 Johnson. And if you have worked with God so well, you won't be confused. You know that that's Johnson. That's David. That's NIA. That's Debbie. You just know that it is not yours. And every time it's not yours, you take permission from the owner. Even if you want to spend on yourself. Lord, yes. Can I? May I? I like this shoe. Can I? May I? I need to travel to UK. Those are the questions you'll be asking. But, but pastor, it's your money. No, 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 no. It's not your money. This temple is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Do you not know that you have been bought with a price? He said, because you are what? You are not your own. So how can you think, you that you are not your... And I, in those days, in the American slave trade, when a slave sees a babe, another slave, and propose to the babe. <laughs> and he's so excited that he's about to get married. And he marries the slave. Then they give birth as slave. What are they still? <laughs> when the slave buy a limousine, <laughs> what are they still? Slave. Slave limousine. You don't know what it means. It simply means that no matter what you have, you don't belong to yourself. And you need to be glad about it. You know why you need to be glad? Because if you are a slave, the owner protects his slave. The owner protects what belongs to the slave. Now, because I'm slave for Christ, I don't pay for protection. There's an automated protection because I belong. I've been sealed. So somebody takes that priority. I don't bother myself when I sleep in the night. I'm not thinking one witch will come and press me. You know I'm not thinking. I'm not my own. So you need to contact the owner to oppress me. Oh, we need to kill him. Contact owner. We need to destroy him. Contact owner. You can't kill because I'm not my own. Now, but the day I refuse to submit to who owns me, then I'm now what? I'm now my own. Now, if I become my own, what also follows it? You take responsibility, protection, provision, 
all of that comes into it because now you have decided and say, I am my own. Does that make sense? Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Let's read fast. One to go. And God said, Please pay attention to 126 because it's a title note to 128. So let's read 126 again. Pay attention. Please, please pay attention to 126. Then put your line, if you are drawing your note, on the line in your scripture, on the line where he starts from have dominion over the fish. You see, when he said have dominion over the fish, over the fowl of the air, so on the line that place, we're going to ref reference it in verse 28. So it will give you some form of harmony. So you'll understand what I'm saying. Now, let's go. And God said, let us make man in our own image. Number two, what up? He said, our likeness. Let them, let them have dominion. Okay, over what? So what you are having dominion is clearly described. Do you understand? I'm going to come to that later. Over the fish of the sea, over the what? The fowl of the air, over the what? Over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over, so you are seeing almost four dimension. You're seeing the air, you're seeing the sea, you're seeing the earth, and you're seeing under the earth. Let me take it again. Let me take it again so that you can notice what I'm doing. He said, let us make man fish the sea, bed the air. Then cattle over the earth. Then there is something, if you understand the deep understanding of creepet, it's talking about things under the earth. So there are four dimensions which we are going to come to when we start talking about how Christ reigned. The air, the sea, the Bible said he looked at the sea and he said what? The earth, then under the earth. Under the earth is defined as Hades, which you're going to come to later. Please follow me. Listen, listen. Let me say this before I, I get into this. Some of you may have watched Dominion messages in so many places. Some of you have heard Dominion messages. Please, I'm begging you. <laughs> what I'm about to say will affect your theology. I'm going to be saying certain things in my normal way, my normal style. It will change the way you see things. So tell the person by your side, or okay, unpack what you have been packing all these years. Just unpack it somewhere. <laughs> tell the person, unlearn, unlearn. Just unlearn. 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 tell the person, remove, remove. remove. Be free, be free, be free. <laughs> tell the person, no beef, no beef. Don't beef, don't beef. Just relax. I'll be saying things that are not normal. But listen, go and check them. That's what I love about this class. Go and check them if they be true. Then see me one-on-one. -on -one. Are you guys ready for a drive? So the first thing I'm mentioning here is very simple. There's a dimension of dominion that all of you need to know how to operate. Some of you can operate in the air but not in the sea. Some of you can operate in the sea, but not on the earth. Some of you can operate in the earth, but what about the underneath the earth? What are those dimensions of dominion? We will speak to it. I'm not saying you are fighting mommy water because I said sea. I get what I'm saying now. Because, because I know where your dimensions are. Because every time you've had water spirit, uh, how many of you have engaged water spirit? I know some of you have, even some of you, they've called you that you have water spirit before. I, I know some of you are here. When they were laying hands on you, say, hey, madam, madam. There's a woman of God. I don't know why marine spirit in, in US, in US, in US, when they're doing deliverance, you don't hear marine spirit. You don't hear marine spirit. <laughs> it's only in Nigerian church that you have marine spirit too in US. So. You know, Nigerian church, African church, African church, marine spirit. You will understand when we say see. 
You need to understand what sea means. Jesus looked at the sea and he rebuilt the sea. He said, be still. Who was Jesus talking to? Hold on. He rebuked the sea. He said, be still. He didn't think twice about it. He said, be still and went to sleep. He didn't think whether the sea will answer. You know why? Because the original intention was in place. Have dominion. Church, if you speak from the point of dominion, you don't question whether it will happen. I gave one funny illustration when I was teaching on faith. I think during faith zone. I said, Bishop Oyedepo, right? When he was going to give birth to his second child, he got to the hospital. And so they, told him, they told him that the child had crossed. So the child, had, there was a bridge. So he, the child was not, was not arranged properly. was not in the right, right position. So he said the head was, was here and the legs were here. He said when he got there, he said he looked at the doctor. The doctor said, oh, this child, there's a bridge. He said he looked at the wife and he said, child, turn! When he said, child, turn, he left. I said, if it was Emmanuel, child, turn! <laughs> Honey, how are you feeling now? <laughs> He's still there. Child! I said, turn! Then I will not go. Then I will not call somebody that is there. I, I, I said, Tom. He said, Pastor, he's still there. Put your hand, put your hand on it. Put your hand on it. Put your hand on it. Put your hand. Turn! You don't, oh God, oh God. You see, you see, after that first turn, 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 turn. You, the other ones, oh, you are operating faith in doubt. Did you hear what I said? You are operating faith in what? In doubt. Your doubt, you have faith in your doubt. Oh, you didn't hear what I said there. Some of you didn't pick what I, you didn't pick. You have doubt, but there's faith in it. <laughs> you are operating strong faith in your doubt because you are almost telling yourself that, ah, will it happen? Has it happened? Will it happen? Has it happened? Will it happen? Has it happened? Because you feel you're the one doing it. Okay. So, is that line clear? No, don't worry. I'm not rushing. You know, like we always do the next three weeks. So I'm not, I'm not over pushing things. Over the earth, over creeping thing that creep out upon the earth. Now, verse 28. Now, check verse 28 carefully. Follow me. Want to go? And what? Uh-huh. And God said to them. Hold on. What was the responsibility of God to them? Eh? Huh? Bless was the responsibility. That was the only thing that God meant to do. Responsibilities, bless them. And God blessed them, then said to them. It's like me saying, this is my responsibility to Debbie. And I bless Debbie with his back. Then I said to Debbie, Debbie, be what? Fruitful. Now, I will not be telling you to be fruitful if I've not blessed you. So the only reason you have capacity for fruitfulness is because it's a blessing. Oh. Now, because you have been blessed, what you now need to check is what is the blessing that must activate fruitfulness because you have been blessed. There is nobody here that is not blessed by kingdom organization the moment you come into Christ a blessing arises he said the Lord that blessed us with all spiritual blessings in what? in heavenly place. so everybody here is blessed thank you for someone that said amen you are blessed I hope you are not, you are not cursed uh, that's the one you react to. I said you are blessed. Amen. So, the blessing, I give it to her. Then I say, hey, madam, 
Be fruitful. Now, have I done my part? So who's doing the other part? Who, who did God tell to be fruitful? He said, you go and be fruitful. I finished my part. Go be fruitful. Do you know I can choose not to be fruitful? Even though I'm what? The Bible said, if a man that is in honor and knoweth not is like a beast that perisheth. You are in honor, but you don't know. Now, your own case is different. You know that you are in honor, but you are still perishing. Do you understand? Please be picking. Listen, you know I told you when I'm speaking, be getting your own word. Don't just be taking mine. Get your own. Get your own. You are blessed, but you're not fruitful. It's not God's fault. You are blessed. Why are you not fruitful? We will dive into that in the course of this agenda. Because you see, fruitfulness is the gateway to dominion. If you are not fruitful, you can't dominate. Fruitfulness is the what? Gateway to what? Dominion. You have to be fruitful to dominate. All right, so let's go. Be fruitful. What again? Oh, talk to me, child. You're, 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 I'm not feeling you this, this evening. Be fruitful. And. And. Semi. English student. When you have semicolon, what, what's about to happen? Oh, yeah. You don't whisper. English student. When you see semicolon, what's about to happen? Huh? Continuation. Explanation. Eh? Explaining it further. Giving us detail. Telling us how it works. Now, in that says, replacing the have and subdue it. And have dominion. Over what again? One. And over and over every living thing that creep upon the earth. So what's he trying to tell you there? Very simple. You can't have dominion if those things have not happened. Fruitfulness, multiplication, replenish the earth and subdue it. So I just wanted to give you that background as the foundation. So that when we are teaching, always remember these things I've just mentioned. That I cannot, I cannot experience dominion power or dominion mandate except I'm fruitful, except I multiply, except I replenish, and except I subdue. When you operate in this dimension, then dominion will come. Amen. We are going to operate from four dimensions in this teaching so that it gives you a clear picture of how dominion should arrive. The first one, write it down. Intention. Tell someone say intention. Intention is the original script of God about your making. Why am I here? Intention. The second dimension God is going to help us to dive into in the course of the teaching, is called corruption. Everybody say corruption. So after the original script, who corrupted it? Corruption. Then the third one we're going to enter into is called restoration. Everybody say restoration. After the correct corruption, God had to restore. How did he restore? Then the fourth one is one that is getting me excited. Another generation. The fourth one is called revolution. Write it down. Revolution. After the restoration, what was the mandate? Is revolution. So there's something called intention. The original intention. When God created man, Psalm 115 verse 16. Psalm 115 verse 16. Are you writing the scripture down? He said, the heaven... Even the heavens are the Lord's. But the earth are he giving what? For the children of men. 
So when God was creating in Genesis chapter 1, hey, let me tell you something. Anytime you are doing a study of anything, anything that you want to find out, please go to Genesis. Everything you will draw from has its origin in Genesis. Genesis 1, Genesis 2, Genesis 3 are the package of the delivery of the old scriptures. There is nothing you're looking for about the blood, about prosperity, about marriage, about Jesus. Everything is from chapter 1 to chapter 3. You will find it. So anytime I'm looking for something, I go straight back to the origin. Let me even see how it is interpreted. Because listen, if you go beyond that, you will be seeing all kinds of interpretation. And that is why the reason why scriptures are being distorted. Everybody pulls things from things. You see people still battling numbers. People battling Deuteronomy. People battling Leviticus. That's why some people will say you must wear this. You must not wear this. You must wear animal skin. You are wearing no animal skin. You are, you are battling what you should not be battling. That's why people are battling with revelation. They don't know which one should happen first or which one should happen second. Some people say, is it, pre, is it pre-rapture? Is it post-rapture? People are confused. Confused. Having so much knowledge that is not giving delivery. So don't bother yourself. Go to Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. It will unwrap to you what should be as it relates to your journey in life. You'll find everything there. You'll find marriage there. You'll find salvation there. You'll find prosperity there. There's nothing you're looking for. You won't find that. Okay. So from Genesis chapter 1, God had an intention. The intention of God was very simple and very straight. Let us make man in our own image. Psalm gave it very clearly in Psalm 115. He said the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's. He said the earth he has given to the sons of men. Watch. He said the heavens. That means when God was doing his creation, he created an image to rule like he rules. To control like he controls. To have dominion like he has dominion. In Psalm 110 verse 2, he said, The Lord shall send forth the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule! So there's something about rulership in the mind of God when he was doing creation. So when God said, listen, hey, the heavens are the Lord. I'm here. Now, Emmanuel, you take care of the earth. Emmanuel, I'm taking care of heaven. Take care of the earth. Lord, what do you mean? When the devil was behaving funny in heaven, I kicked him out. Okay? He came to the earth. He said, war to the earth, for Satan has fallen. Now, 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 watch this, watch this. Watch this, Chita. When the heaven was behaving funny in heaven, God kicked him out. He came to the earth. When he was behaving funny on earth, they didn't kick him out. And God didn't do anything. When the devil came to tempt Eve, Was God aware? Yes, he was. Yes. Huh? He knew. He knew what was going on. <laughs> Golden question. Why didn't God intervene? <laughs> By rule, I hope you know that when God makes a pronouncement, it's not only the heavens that hear, even devils hear. Do you know that's the reason why God can't break his own rules? Talk to me, church. Do you know that's why if anybody sins, judgment must come? Do you know why God could not just maneuver and say, I'm almighty, and because one sin, I just say, okay, I will scatter everything now. Nobody will know. All of us just go blank. Then everybody just appear like Adam. We are, <laughs> we are here again. <laughs> you know, he wouldn't have taken God anything. Now, we have sinned yet. We are falling short of glory. God can just say, okay, you know what? Let me cre- create human being. Pump! I just create everybody afresh. Then we appear. Then all of us are forgotten that somebody sinned. God could have done that. But he will not be just. So what did God do? Simple. When, when, when a man sinned, it was already written and spoken that it is appointed that after a man sinned, he must what? He must face judgment. So God knew there has to be judgment. The devil also has the script. So if God does not follow through with that script, God will be a liar. So God, in his infinite wisdom, needed to play the script. But God knew that whoever will play that script must have a pure blood so that he doesn't come every time to die. So that's where the devil missed it. Because when God was playing that script, he used himself to play the script. 
So when, when God sent his son, now the devil did not understand when he said the son of God. He was seeing the son of man, not the son of God. So when he was saying son of God, he didn't understand. He saw the son of man. He just knew this guy can perform miracle like Elijah, like Elijah. He just said, okay, 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 okay. This guy can perform miracle. But he did not know that this is not one that performed miracle. He's miracle himself. Church, you are not here. You're not getting what I'm saying. That's why when he said that, listen, I am resurrection and I am life. That's what he was saying. So when he entered into a body that the earth prepared for him, he entered into a body. He is not body. He entered into a body. He said, a body has now prepared for me that I may fulfill the volume of book that is written of me. So he entered into the body. He wore the body suit of human being because a man has to die. So he submitted himself to death, even death upon the cross. So when the devil hit him and killed him, it is scriptural that he must be killed. God designed it. That's why I said, hey, 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 somebody must betray me. It wasn't an exciting news now. Do you know what it means for you to know the person that will betray you? If you know that somebody in a group is about to kill you and God gave you a word of knowledge, what would you do? <laughs> And I have a word of knowledge that you're about to kill me. Okay, I will set you up. Now, because I, but Jesus knew that Judas was the one that was going to kill him. And, and God, Jesus told him, please, whatever you want to do, do quickly. Even Jesus was rushing the gate. Oh, guys, I'm not here. Jesus was rushing it. Just say, do it fast, do it fast. I can't wait, I can't wait. I need to die, I need to die, I need to die. If, if Judas, oh, I'm, I'm going ahead of myself now. If Judas had known, Wait, that killing Jesus was going to set a revolution. You know what he would have done? Mama, you know what I would have done? He would have created security around Jesus. <laughs> Demons will play PA. Oh, you didn't understand. Demons will play PA for Jesus. Demons will be the one protecting Jesus. If any principality near Jesus, demons will fight. You will see demons fighting. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> don't, don't touch. No touch. Don't touch. Eh? You don't know that if you kill him, something will happen. Don't kill him. <laughs> oh, give God praise. Listen, listen, listen. Listen. You know what? I'm always excited about the wisdom of God. This is why I'm always excited about the wisdom of God. You will think you know God until God plays a fool on you. There was a good scripture I saw one day and it scared me. He said to the forward, God will be forward to them. Yeah. That's when I knew God can be dangerous. If you think you can cheat, God will cheat you. Oh, you think you can cheat? God will cheat you. Oh, you think you can do 419? God will play your role. <laughs> when, oh, I'm, I'm overstepping. Nebuchadnezzar opened his mouth and said, hey, I am the king. I have the... God said, okay, no problem. Let me, let me show this guy dominion. God first took him, changed his appetite. All of a sudden, a man that longs for bread and uh, pandanyam had desire for grass. I mean, grass was good for him. I get what I'm saying. He took him to University of Grassland. I get what I'm saying. He relaxed there and did education. He had masters and PhD there. I get me. How do I know he had masters and PhD? Because when he finished, you know what he said? He said, now I know. You know when you have PhD, you know you always know fully. I get what I'm saying. Now, but you guess what? Guess what? To show you dominion, to show you dominion, to listen, to show you dominion. When God was dealing with him in the University of Grassland, nobody could climb the throne. Go there. Planku, planku. <laughs> there's no king, there's no king. Shh, guys, there's no king. Me will take over, me will take over. Take over. <laughs> even, though there was, even though the seat was empty, listen, there was nobody sitting on the seat, but you can't go near because the glory of the Lord is sitting on that seat. He's telling you, come now. Come, come now. Come. That's dominion. That's dominion. Let me tell you what dominion means. Dominion. Dominion means God can destroy a place and he doesn't need to do anything. Not that he feels like he's doing anything. You let's just destroy it. He played with Pharaoh. He was throwing him up and down. 
Pharaoh, yes? Let my people go. Okay, sir. No, I will not allow. Okay. Okay, don't let them go again. Okay. Let them go again. <laughs> he will play with Pharaoh. The scripture says he will harden the heart of Pharaoh. So that means he will tell Pharaoh, let them go. They will, they'll say he will harden. Say, ah, you're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. Go, don't be laughing. I can imagine the angel say, Papa, what do we do again? Should we, <laughs> should we move him again? That's why scripture says the heart of a king is in the hand of the Lord. Listen, if any man is here that has told you that it's either my life or death, it's either my life or death, just rejoice and give God praise. He said one of them will happen to you so soon. I just need to let you know because the heart of a king is in the hand of the Lord. The Lord can turn it. The original intention of God is that as he rules the heavens, you rule the earth. When the devil, when he was found in his heart to, write, to raise himself above the most high God, he was kicked out. He came to the earth and Adam did not kick him out. God did not do anything. Church, you should be warned. Every time a devil plays in your house and you say, Lord, where are you? Is that the man I'm here? Lord, would you not come in? No, don't come in. Ah. Lord, what are you saying? No, show up. I'm not coming. Ah. Did you not hear what my son told you in Luke chapter 10, verse 19? Did you not hear when Jesus died and he was going? Did you not hear what he told you in Luke 10, 19? He said, Behold, I give you all authority and all power to tread upon snake and scorpion to tread upon snake and scorpion did I not tell you and what over what oh talk to me church over what all the power of the enemy and what no no always call semicolon when you are reading that scripture so that it gives you semicolon explain where to us scripture and nothing everybody say nothing, nothing. oh church tell someone say nothing nothing, nothing. oh Tell the person, go to your village. Go to your village. Tell the person, nothing. Stop moving as if something kept you. You're a ruler. Ah, Pastor, but there's sometimes there's fear. Yes, I know. But the fear should be outside, not inside. That means sometimes you feel some jitters. You know, you know how you're passing through a, a valley of shadow of death when there's dark. There's some jitters. Something will tell you, ooh, ah, it's as if some of the fear, right? But make sure he does not get inside. So inside of you, keep telling yourself, little children, greater is he, not outside, inside. So God is always talking about inside. Greater is he that is inside than he that is outside. So there's something about inside and outside. Stop worrying about outside. Worry about inside. Yeah. You know, all of you are always worried about outside. Oh, they are big. There are big, 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 big giants. Heavy giants. We are like grasshoppers. Even in our eyes. Who told you you're a grasshopper, sir? Where did you get the mentality from? Who gave you the revelation? Oh, it is where I was born from. I, um, a single mother gave birth to me. A prostitute gave birth to me. It's the school I went to. The school I went to. I, 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 all, all my failures. I, I, I never graduated. Who told you? Who told you you're a grasshopper, sir? Who gave you the word? Say that! Jeremiah, say that! I'm a child. He said, but I'm a child. Say that! I'm a child. In the spirit is not how old you are. It's how close you are to the Holy Spirit. It's not how old you are. It's not how old you are. It's how close you are to the Holy Spirit. Because you, when you get closer to the Holy Spirit, you get older in the Lord. You get stronger in the Lord. You get stronger in the Lord. That's what it tells you. What's wrong with us? Who spoke this lie to us? That is why when you are walking, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are bent. Ah, oh, oh, you daughters of Abraham. Why are you bent? You are not supposed to be bent. You cannot be bent physically if your heart has not been bent. Your mind is bent. Your thinking is bent. Your philosophy is bent, sir. Who told you? Who spoke that bad word and negative word to your spirit? Who 
who killed your exciting spirit? Who told you you are nobody? Who told you? You've allowed it to creep in, sir. This is the time to flush it out. Because the original intent is that when he rules the heaven, you will rule the earth. The original intent is that when he dominates the heaven, you will dominate the earth. He has passed the baton. He has given it to us. And he said, Manuel, take the territory. He said, ask for me of the earth and I will give you. Ask for me of the earth and I will give you all of that for your possession. Emmanuel, I have given you. I have given you. Why are you worrying me? Who told you? Who told us? Who told you you can't take the city? Who told you? Caleb said we are able. Tell someone say I'm able. Amen. Oh, look at someone say I'm able. Amen. Who told you? Who told you? If you hear our stories, if you hear our story, if you hear so many people's story, we all had a very quack story, not an organized story, a, a, a distorted story, a story not in straight line. The story is all zigzag, but let me tell you, as you're having those story, God is writing this story because all things work together. God will keep moving things, shaking things, pulling people, pulling situation so that you can come into his story. Who told you? Who told you? The pastor of country Lord, who told you that that defines who you are? You are a ruler. Yes. I have dominion, and that's why it worries me when sin. Somebody say, Pastor, I don't know what to do. I keep committing this sin. I keep committing this habit. Oh, Pastor, what will I do? Then go to Romans chapter seven, when Paul was admonishing himself, and he got to a point, and he told himself, "I say, Hey, I don't know what's going on with me. The things I want to do, I don't. I'm doing. The things I don't want to do, I find myself doing." He said, "Who will deliver me from this?" terrible flesh of man. He said, but thanks be to God. Thanks be to Jesus who has delivered me. They now switch to verse, the chapter 8 verse 1. He said, there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus for the law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. Tell somebody, say, I've been set free. I've been set free. I've been set free. Oh, I said, tell somebody, I've been set free. I've been set free. Anytime a sin wants to stir up in your heart and a sin tells you you know I've come again. This is what you normally you tell the person there's no condemnation. You can't condemn me. I'm justified. I'm sanctified. Oh, I've been set free. You can't keep my heart down. Oh, hey, hey, hey. you had one that sinned yesterday. I said, I'm justified. I've been paid for. I have the grace of God. The grace of God is upon my life. And based on that grace, I've been set free. Who told you? Let's close on this note. I'm still on intention. I'm still on intention. The original intention, Fisayo, is that when God was making you, the intention he had is that the heavens are the Lord's and the earth he gave to Alex. When he gave the earth to Alex, shh, 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 shh. Alex started naming the animals. An excellent spirit was activated. He started calling monkey, monkey, donkey, snake, dog. He started naming them. He did not stutter. He did not repeat himself. The spirit of excellence. He was naming with accuracy. And everything he named become. He, names, he named the goat, goat become. He named snake, snake become. That's why he was paining God. That was why he was paining God. That was why he was paining God. When the snake came and, and the enemy entered through that nature and he did not know that the one you named, when you name it, you are in control. Listen, you must name it. You see, anytime you are going through something, name it. I say, hey, I, you have a name. Oh, you, this is, you have a name. This problem, you have a name. The moment you name it, you have control. Because anytime you name it, then you bring a name that is higher than the name. Because there's only one name that is recognized in heaven. At the name of Jesus. Oh, everybody say, at the name of Jesus. No, somebody sleeping by yourself. Say, at the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, shout, say, Jesus. No, no, you're not helping me. Everybody say, Jesus. No, 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 you're not getting what I'm saying. I say, everybody say, Jesus. Say that name with conviction. Everybody say, Jesus. Jesus. Is that the name of Jesus? 
every knee. Listen, that thing is not a chorus. It's a standard configuration in the spirit. You know what they call configuration? It means this is the way it must go. Standard. It's not chorus. It's not when we sing, hey, uh, uh, what the name is this? Jesus. Yeah, I've forgotten that song. What a beautiful name in it. Danny. Listen, listen. It's not in singing. Enough of singing. Start believing what you sing. Enough of singing. I think encourage you. <laughs> Believe. Bagbo, Bagbo, that's what I say, Bagbo. Believe. Listen, you see, anytime I'm using language, eh, it's because sometimes I can't explain it. Listen, if you're a teacher, all right, in those days in the Greek and the Hebrew, it's not in English. So they could make sense to what they're teaching. Have you seen a Yoruba man teach before? When you hear that teaching in Yoruba, you will understand teaching. You know, we try to palm it in English, but you can't say it well. How can you call believe Bagbo? Bagbo, believe. Eh? Believe is too soft. Tell someone say Bagbo. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say to Nibo? When you say believe? Eh? Kweli. Kwete? Eh? Kwete? Kweli. You know, there's something you say, you cannot forget in your spirit. That was why they were speaking in Greek and in Hebrew. But English has, you know, English has found a way to neutralize the power in that statement. Like, for example, you're calling power. You're saying dunamis. And you're, 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 you're calling it power. Ah, when you hear dunamis, it, 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 it lands well. You, you, you carry it. I got it. Agbara. 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 Dominion. Never again should a sin have dominion over you. He said, listen, you are the only one that can permit it. Do you know how powerful you are? You are the only one that can permit yourself to fornicate. Yes. Fornication can't just say, you will fornicate. You, will. you are the one who say, okay, let me come. Let me go and fornicate self. <laughs> oh, you don't get what I'm saying. Listen, you have power. You have power to fornicate. Who owns the power? You have the power. Meaning you can easily say, I'm not doing it. What scripture is saying is this. Scripture is saying that you do not have the seed of sin. It's not here. So for you to do anything, you must bend your configuration. Because that's not you. So you must force yourself. It's like me forcing myself to be poor. <laughs> my lineage, my covenant of Abraham, is a covenant of wealth. So for me to be poor, I need to force myself. Oh yeah, Emmanuel, you, you have to be poor. Oh yeah, Emmanuel, for you to be poor, lazy, be lazy. You won't do anything. Okay, I want to be poor. I will not work again. <laughs> I will not give. I will not give. I want to be poor. Do you know in three weeks you can be poor? Because you also have the power to be poor. See how powerful you are. You have the power to be poor, and after being poor, you not say, okay, I decide. I want to be rich. Oh, Shande Kamala Kati at least. You know, what, you know what scripture is telling you? Scripture is telling you that there is nothing I am giving you. I have given you power and authority. I have given you. He said, no power of the enemy shall by enemies. Enemies means that if they use any kind of strategy, even if they, even if they use person closest to you, it cannot hurt you. One of the most dangerous scripts, or put it up for me, I think, um, I think it's Mark chapter 16 and 17. I will close from there. Mark 16, one of the most dangerous scriptures that some of you have never noticed before. And we got a testimony about it. I heard the testimony and it blew my mind. He said, he said, these signs shall what? Shall follow them that believe in my word. What shall happen? Now, so all of us are good with that one, right? That one is simple to understand. Is that all right? Meaning that in his name, you should do what? Cast out devils. Now, it means you already have power. So anywhere there are devils, you should have the power to cast it out. So tell somebody you can cast out devil. You can cast out devil. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at the person again. You say, hey, I hope you're a believer. <laughs> so that you will not be casted out yourself. No, remind the person, I hope you're a believer. I'm talking to you. Uh -huh. Because he's talking about people in his name. Oh. You don't call me your name. Oh. Uh -huh. So in my name, they shall cast out devils. Number two. 
So we all understand that also. We can speak in new tongue. Now watch number three. What's number three? Go. They shall what? Take up serpents. Church. Church. You know, I like describing things well so that you will understand scripture. Man of God, I will cast out devil. No problem. I will speak in new tongues. No problem. Serpent is walking. <laughs> Serpent is walking. Why don't you just find your way and ignore serpent? What is your problem? Can it happen, chef? Well, just find your way. But what scripture say? He says, you shall what? You shall take up. You know what it means? You shall take up. It means you will enter into some zones. You already know that there are serpents there. But God is saying, enter, 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 enter. So as you're entering, serpent, take up, take up, take up. As you're taking up serpent, you're taking up, taking up, taking up. Take up serpent. Then this one, if, everybody say if. This one, this one is in a different level. The other one is take serpent. That's warfare. The other one is if, so that you don't approach foolishness. That one is wisdom. That one is you don't go and drink something and say you want to prove God. That one is you don't go on the main road and say I'm going to see whether, whether God is operating. You not say on the expressway. God is not operating. <laughs> that if there is operate wisdom, not foolishness. But if by adventure you drink a deadly thing he happened to a brother. I heard his testimony. He was in the lab. So in the lab where they had all kinds of chemicals. So they used to do a lot of things, a lot of mixture. So they also have a place they have water that they drink. You know. So while he was so thirsty, he just, he just took one of the cups that was by the lab side and he just drank it. You get what I'm saying? So he had taken it. Then I think the colleague just said, hey, please let me bring that in or something like that. You say, ah, what? He said, ah, that, the cup there now. He said, ah, is that in the water? No, he says it's acid. Eh? It's acid. You know, you know, you know, he, he has taken it a while. Eh? He wasn't feeling anything. Now, you know, somehow, when you now notice that it is acid, the moment, hey, 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 look at faith. The moment you start thinking it, then it starts manifesting. But the guy started speaking. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. The guy started speaking. He entered into the scripture and started telling him that if I take it, it will not hurt me. And he started speaking to himself. Oga, oga, oga. Acid turned to water. Oh, church, you are not here. You are not here. Everybody said dominion. Everybody said dominion. Some of you, let me through with you. Some of you read the scripture. You don't believe it. But you see, on this journey, something will push you to believe. <laughs> something will force your belief. This journey. Something will press you. You will have to operate in something. Ah, if you don't dominate, they will dominate you. Lift up your hand. Let's give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thanks for watching the Potter's House of Lagos Global Broadcast. For more information, please visit www.thepottershouseoflagos.org You can also follow us on all our social media platforms to stay up to date with everything we're doing here in this ministry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.